Hello, my name is Andrew. I am the service manager at Solar Forever in Perth, Western Australia. This video is about connecting battery storage at your home. I'll be discussing AC coupling a battery, DC coupling a battery, and of course what that means, and the various products that are available uh, for both uh, AC and DC coupling. So what I'm going to start with is the concept of AC coupling, and I want you to think just simply about there being two inverters. One inverter is the inverter that's running the solar panels. The other inverter is the one that's running the battery. Now, in the case of a Tesla Powerwall or a Sonnen, the inverter is actually inside the battery box. But in many cases, it's outside. It's actually a separate box on the outside next to a battery. And people who've already got uh, a really good quality inverter, like the one pictured here, may be uh, tossing up whether they want to replace that inverter with a hybrid inverter, which we will come to, uh, an inverter that can connect both a battery and solar panels, or whether they keep what they've got separate and then just add the battery AC coupled with another inverter. Well, we might as well start when we're discussing AC coupled batteries with the world's most famous one, which is Tesla's Powerwall 2. Uh, on the left of the picture, you can see the big battery box. That's 13 and a half kilowatt hours of storage in the Powerwall 2. The right-hand box is called the gateway, where the cables and comms and backup uh, circuitry all runs through. And uh, time of recording this in October 2022, that whole package with backup installed is $18,000, which may seem a lot, but when I show you the other options, it's not an extreme amount considering you're getting quite a lot of storage included in that price. If uh, 13 and a half kilowatt hours of storage and $18,000 is too expensive and too large for you, then here's another solution from Growot, a five kilowatt inverter on the right here, a uh, battery stack that goes up in two and a half kilowatt hour modules, where if you had five kilowatt hours of storage, it'll cost you about six and a half thousand dollars installed, it's got an optional backup uh, uh, box as well, which I'll discuss later about backup. Uh, if you were to put on uh, four battery modules, so 10 kilowatt hours of storage, yeah, the price would be up around the $10,000 mark. Another AC coupled battery only inverter solution is the Alpha B3 Plus. It's a three kilowatt inverter, so it can only charge and discharge at three kilowatts, which is a bit low compared to some of the other products. The battery modules stack up uh, five, five kilowatt hour at a time. So six and a half thousand installed for five kilowatt hours, 10 and a half for 10 kilowatt hours, and 14 and a half for 15 kilowatt hours of storage. And it can actually go larger than that. So compared to 18,000 for the Powerwall, this is still quite a decent price. The fourth and last option I've got as a, a AC coupled solution is the Goodwee SBP inverter, a five kilowatt inverter and uh, 5.4 kilowatt hour Goodwee Lynx batteries, low voltage batteries. A pretty good solution, a little bit more expensive than the Alpha and the GrowWatt solutions, but still a good product. Before I move on to DC coupling, I just want to explain a Western Australian specific regulation, which is if you have single phase, you're allowed a 5 kilowatt solar inverter, which could be solar only, or a solar and battery inverter, a hybrid inverter, in addition, you're allowed a 5 kilowatt battery only inverter, such as the one inside a Tesla Powerwall, or the Alpha or GrowWatt or Goodwee inverter, battery only inverters that I described earlier. If you have three phase, then you can pretty much install what you like 15 kilowatts of solar only or solar and hybrid, and then 15 kilowatts of battery only inverter. But these rules mean that if you have single phase, you cannot have a 5 kilowatt solar inverter and then a 5 kilowatt hybrid inverter to run your battery, which rules out Fronius and Huawei and SunGrow and all the other great hybrids for your additional battery only inverter. Uh, because as hybrids, they're not battery only, they're battery and solar, whether you connect solar panels to them or not. So that was. AC coupled, where you have an inverter and a battery, and it really has nothing whatsoever to do with your solar. Now let's look at DC coupled, which very much does have everything to do with your solar, because the inverter that runs your solar is also running the battery. The battery is plugged directly into the inverter. 
and let's look at some options for that. So what I'll do now is just run through a few uh, of our DC coupled installations we've done recently. So pictured here is a Frenius 10 kilowatt Simo Gen 24 hybrid. It's got 13 kilowatts of panels connected to it and a BYD battery, 16 and a half kilowatt hours of BYD battery. Here's another one where there's 10 kilowatts of inverter, but this time it's done with two 5 kilowatt inverters. So inverter's in a master slave arrangement. It still works exactly like it's a 10 kilowatt inverter, but uh, uh, two fives uh, offers certain feature advantages sometimes. Um, 20 kilowatts of panels, uh, because Huawei allow 200% oversizing uh, when you've got a battery connected, and the battery is there, Huawei's 10 kilowatt hour module, which can you know, this customer could have 60 kilowatt hours of battery storage, 30 kilowatt uh, hours per inverter. So uh, plenty of room for growth uh, if he wants to. This one's a DC coupled Goodwe EH inverter, five kilowatt with seven and a half kilowatts of panels. I don't think the customer's roof could actually take any more than that, but they, they, they could have added more, I think. Uh, and a very large battery, relatively 19.3 and uh, 19 kilowatt hours of battery uh, from BYD. And I'll finish up with our recent um, DC coupled uh, installations. This one's a SunGrow 5 kilowatt single phase hybrid, 11 kilowatts of panels running off that 5 kilowatt inverter. Again, it's just rules about oversizing when you have a battery, uh, with uh, each inverter can uh, set it whatever its limits are, up to the 600 volt um, string voltage limit. And uh, 9.6 kilowatt hours of SunGrow's SBR battery, which can again expand. Uh, it's quite a small battery, the SunGrow battery, 3.2 kilowatt hour modules. So you can see just by looking at the bricks there that uh, that could go up to 20 kilowatt hours quite comfortably and still be underneath the inverter. When we're talking about DC coupling, which is where the battery is plugging directly into a hybrid inverter, the cost of the batteries are typically about 1,200 per kilowatt hour of storage. That's for a lithium iron phosphate battery as used by BYD and Huawei and SunGrow. Uh, same cells inside, same price. So five kilowatt hours is $6,000, 10 kilowatt hours of storage is $12,000 and so forth. So by the time you got up to 15 kilowatt hours of storage, you're pretty much the same price as a Tesla Powerwall. There are many reasons why people are buying batteries. Some of them uh, are for people who are retiring shortly and want to have uh, fewer or no bills in retirement. Some for grid independence, some to be greener so that they're getting their power day and night from solar and battery rather than from a gas-fired power station. But one of the reasons we hear pretty much all the time is that people, in addition to other reasons, want to get backup. And backup is where you are protected from a blackout. You may have the only lights on in your street. Uh, the battery or the solar panels are providing power to the house when the grid goes out. Some inverters have the backup function built in, as with this uh, Goodwe hybrid. SunGrow typically have backup built in. Alpha typically have it uh, as an available that's built into the actual inverter. And other inverters have it as an external box. Uh, Fronius, Huawei, SolarEdge, GrowUp, for example, uh, single and three-phase boxes for, for backup external to the inverter. Irrespective of, though, whether the backup is built in or external, there is still going to be a considerable amount of electricians' time at the switchboard creating the essential load circuits. Um, Generally speaking, unless you use very little power across your whole house, you won't be able to back up your whole house. You'll have to pick what you want to operate uh, in the event of a backup. And then the electrician will actually have to reconfigure your switchboard for that. So my recommendation is if you're looking at backup, whether it's built in or as an external box, add on about $600 in labor costs for the electrician to actually design the backup circuits. So I'm going to finish this video up with just a summary of what's been discussed. So AC coupled or DC coupled battery.
With an AC couple battery, you need one inverter for your solar and another inverter for your battery. So therefore, the market for AC couple batteries is typically for people who've already got solar and want to add a battery later on and are not keen on replacing their existing solar inverter with a hybrid, which is, of course, one option available to them. DC coupled batteries are typically what happens when people are buying uh, solar and battery and inverter all together. So the inverter is handling both the solar and the battery. Um, and some of the extra benefits of DC coupling are that the manufacturers will allow, you know, typically 200% oversizing, not always 200%, but over, uh, having, you know, 10 kilowatts of panels on a 5 kilowatt inverter or 20 kilowatts of panels on a 10 kilowatt inverter, as an example. And if the battery and the inverter manufacturer are one and the same, then you've probably got tighter integration in the software in the way that they work together, um, obviously because it's just one manufacturer rather than having one for solar and one for the battery. So that's about that for this video. I um, can be reached at andrew at solarforever.com.au or you can post a comment below and I'll get to it uh, as soon as I spot a comment has popped up. Um, there are a lot of options. There's no question that AC coupling, DC coupling, batteries, it's, uh, it's complicated by the fact that there is a lot of choice. Um, hopefully we can guide you to the right products, um, either from this video or from future chats. Thanks. See you in the next video.